All right. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar on effective resume writing and interview techniques. Today is June 22nd, uh, 2023. All right. So what we're going to do today, uh, we'll start off with a quick overview of what Caltap's all about, um, you know, what we do with uh, uh, in the state and how we help veterans across uh, the state in every region. Um, after that, you'll hear from your uh, or a local interagency network coordinator um, who will talk about how they work with veterans across the state. Um, followed by that, you will hear from a representative from the VA who will talk to you about, um, you know, the resume writing and interview techniques, the reason why we're here. Uh, once that's done, we will go into a questions and answers period where um, we can go ahead and um, all service providers can help and answer any questions that you guys may have for us. Um, in the meantime, if you guys uh, have questions um, and want to ask those while the speakers are speaking, feel free to use that questions and answers uh, option that's there on your toolbar. Um, those questions will go through uh, and at any time those speakers can answer those questions or we'll hold them until the end of the event and use those to facilitate the questions and answers portion. Um, the chat is going to be disabled and that's because I, my colleague Jen will be adding resources into the chat throughout the presentation. Um, so you guys can use those and download those and have them on your phone or your laptop um, and use them whenever needed. So um, we'll go right, we'll go ahead and move on to the CalTAP overview. My name is Michael Cisneros. I'm a training coordinator with the California Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, been with CalTAP for about three and a half years now. Um, so happy to be here and uh, happy to let you guys know how, how we work with veterans across the state. Uh, so what is CalTAP? Well, CalTAP is a transition assistance program um, and it's designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned state and federal benefits as well as provide continuous assistance and support as their needs change over time. And so what we've done is we've developed different pathways that help veterans and service members and their families navigate those benefits and services that are available to them. Those pathways are the core curriculum pathway, there's an education pathway, an employment pathway, we have an entrepreneurship pathway, and we also have a service provider pathway. Um, service provider pathway, we don't really talk about much. Uh, however, if you do have uh, individuals within your family or within your community that do want to work with veterans, feel free to send them to our uh, website to check out some of that curriculum. It just talks about military culture um, and kind of gives the individual an understanding of what uh, service members go through uh, while they are serving and a little bit about that transition process um, that, that they experience, um, whether they're going to school or getting health care or whatnot. Uh, this right here is your veteran resource book. Um, so uh, if this was an in-person uh, event, you guys would each have an actual physical copy sitting in front of you right now. However, since we are doing this virtually, we are putting a link to the uh, PDF copy in the chat. You also received um, reminder emails through Zoom that had uh, a link for the PDF copy of this book uh, included as well. Um, you guys go ahead and click on that link. Uh, download this book to your phone so you can have it on you at all times or onto your laptop, wherever wherever you are. Um, I like to say this book is like gold for veterans. So everything that we discuss when it comes to programs and services or benefits that are available through California, you can find that information here in this book. Um, how do you use CalTAP online? Uh, if you go to our website, calvet.ca.gov, right there on the home screen, you'll find the CalTAP banner. When you click on that banner, you're taken to our pathways page. And this is where you can find the curriculum on, the, on those pathways that I mentioned earlier. Um, on top of finding the curriculum for those pathways, we also have an archives link. So since, uh, since we started doing webinars back when in 2020, when COVID uh, uh, hit us, we recorded all those webinars and we attached uh, our PowerPoints to uh, those files as well. Um, so you can go to our archives link and you can check out what we've been doing for the past um, three years. Uh, you can see all the all the um, service writers that we've worked with. Um, you can get their contact information. We've talked about everything from financial literacy to claims and compensation, VA healthcare, mental health, um, anything you can think of, we've probably already talked about it. Um, so go ahead and use that archives link to kind of to get that get those resources and use them um, whenever you need. Uh, if you click on any one of those pathways that I mentioned earlier, you can get to our modules page. So this uh, mod this modules page is for our core curriculum pathway. Um, on this pathway, you'll find everything from 
um, VA healthcare, information about the VA healthcare system, claims and compensation. Uh, there is a financial literacy link uh, that's down at the bottom. Uh, but if you're kind of just curious to know what your, Calif what your California benefits are for being a veteran, you'd want to click on module five. Um, so what are those benefits? Well, one of the main ones is your local interagency network coordinator. Um, and so you'll be hearing from the Central Valley link uh, after I'm done speaking. Uh, she'll go over how they work with veterans. So I'm not going to step on her tooth too much, but this is a great uh, resource that's offered through CalVet. Um, and every all eight regions of the state have a specific link. Uh, these are also some benefits that are offered through the state of California um, at, because of your veteran status. Um, CalVet has a tuition fee waiver that's offered to their child dependents or to your child dependents. Um, this is good for any state funded school, so any CSU, UC, or California Community College. You can also get the word veteran printed on your driver's license. Um, just makes it easier to identify as a veteran. Um, we have motor vehicle registration fee waivers that are offered to veterans with disability ratings of 100, uh, 100 and uh, permanently disabled. Uh, reduced fishing and hunting license. There's a state park pass that's offered at no cost. Uh, there's also tax programs for individuals that have their own businesses or, or want to open their own businesses or own property. Um, on top of that, we have divisions that offer uh, information, advocacy, outreach, and support. Uh, those are our women veterans division, our minority veterans division. Um, we also have a CalVet home loan uh, that's different than the VA home loans. Um, and for those individuals um, who are maybe looking for these services or planning ahead. Um, there are homes for long-term care, eight different homes in California, um, and we also have three different cemeteries that are um, different than the federal VA cemeteries. Um, so common websites that we think you should be familiar with, uh, not just as a California veteran, but as a veteran in general, is obviously the va.gov website. Um, I like to say that this is kind of like a hub for uh, veterans, uh, whether you're looking to get information about the VA healthcare system, um, uh, start working with your education benefits, uh, file for claims and uh, compensation, or even check out your records, you'll want to start here on this website. This is what it looks like when you sign up and, and you log in. Um, My Healthy Vet is also a, a really good website if you are taking advantage of the VA healthcare system. On this website, you can view your primary care or you can view your uh, your health records. Um, communicate with your primary care physician, set up appointments with them, and even refill prescriptions. All right, so if you want to keep in touch with uh, or keep in uh, touch with what CalTAP's doing over the next couple months, you can always provide your non-DOD email to our CalTAP inbox. That's caltap at calvet.ca.gov. Um, what that will do, we will put you on a mailing list so you can um, get our, our uh, newsletter every month. Every month we focus on a different topic. This month we are focusing on employment. Uh, next month, I believe we are focusing on education. Um, could be wrong, uh, but maybe I can get some clarity on that and let you guys know later on. Uh, do apologize for that. Um, you can always follow our social media pages as well um, and uh, always fill out the survey. It's not necessary, but the survey does let us know what we did well today, uh, what we could work on in the future. And if you have any tips um, or, or subjects that you want us to talk about, we can always take those into consideration there too. This is what my CalVet looks like. Um, signing up and registering would just kind of tailor the information on our website to your interests. Uh, and this is what our newsletter looks like. It's kind of an old version, but it's the same gist. You'll get a, a message from our deputy secretary, um, information about the upcoming webinars and, and what topic we're focusing on that month, um, along with resources and information on the service providers we partner with. So this is my um, contact information. I know that was a, a lot of information to take in at one time, but just understand CalTAP's here to help you uh, with the transition process um, and get in contact or get in touch with um, resources that can help you at any stage of your life, whether that's um, recently se uh, separating or um, going into school or whatnot. Um, feel free to email me at any time. If I can't answer your questions, I probably could direct you to somebody who can. So I'm going to go ahead and now move on to our local interagency network coordinator. Um, Annette Walliver is the center val or Central Valley region link, and she's going to uh, let you know how they work with veterans across the state. So when you're ready, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Annette Walliver. I'm is what is referred to as a link, which is appropriate because we want to get you connected to all those benefits and services you're entitled to. 
um, I'm a field rep. I'm one of the eight field reps for the state of California. Next slide, please. So you can see that CalVet has divided the state into eight regions. Each color is a region with a coordinating link. Uh, Central Valley link, I'm the purple, I'm in the one in the middle. I cover Stanislaw to Kern counties, uh, eight counties representing current and prior military service members. So as a team, the eight of us are, make sure we're in, informed about all the federal and state benefits that you're entitled to. But within our individual communities, we build a network of services with our collaboratives, our nonprofits, our local agencies, so we can provide what I call a safety net. So what state and federal may not assist military service members with, we can find those local community resources that can help you, whether you have a hole in your roof. Uh, we had an elderly couple who air conditioner broke down. Uh, they need, someone needed boots for their job coming up. These community resources are there to pick up the slack that maybe state and federal can't do in a timely manner. Next slide, please. So links, we provide outreach to service members, veterans, and their families, and we go to DOD installations. Uh, I was in uh, Lamore Naval Air Station twice this week. I was at the Army uh, National Guard Station last week. So we wanna make sure that active duty service members are aware of the benefits before they separate. Uh, we go to the Veterans Resource and Community Colleges. Uh, these community colleges actually have a lot of great things for those if you're going to go there. Not only information about veteran services, local contacts, but also they have a Veterans Resource Center. Uh, a lot of times they'll have a food pantry that you can take a break in. Uh, also, uh, in some cases, because they get grants from the government, uh, they're able to provide, uh, lend out laptops, uh, MIFIs, and even textbooks in some cases. So take advantage of these benefits if you're going to go, if you're going or going to go to a community college. And then we also work with the Veterans Resource Center in our libraries, in those remote areas that don't have direct access to veteran services like Kulanga or Lake Isabella, Ridgecrest, Los Banos. Uh, so we want to make sure they do have all the information that they need. And then by being in touch with our community partners, we can make direct referrals so that we can do a soft handoff for someone you can speak to directly, a name, a number that you can contact if you need information. And then we uh, assist in uh, local emergencies. Uh, I've had a very busy year this year. I was deployed five times to the uh, disaster recovery centers uh, throughout the state. And um, it's amazing what we can do. So we're there, I'm working with FEMA, Cal OES, Office of Emergency Services, other state agencies so that those individuals who are impacted by the floods can get the assistance and information that they need to go forward. And then we stay in touch with our community partners. Uh, we're advocates and by making sure that our partners know what the benefits and services are, any changes and updates to benefits and serve services, and if there's any gaps in services that we can forward this information to headquarters and maybe make a change in those benefits. Next slide, please. So getting connected to your benefits, that's what I'm all about. Um, I consider myself the poster child for getting connected to benefits. I served in the United States Army from 1975 to 1978. I used my GI Bill, received my degree, uh, got a VA home loan, and I thought that's pretty much it. Uh, it wasn't until I started working for the state of California in 2010, I realized I could file for compensation. So I have a service-connected disability, which leads to additional benefits. I'm also enrolled in VA healthcare. So maybe the benefits you didn't need back then, you might need later on. And a lot of these benefits do not expire. So take advantage of them when you need them. Um, so employment and training, these are the agencies I work with day in and day out. Employment and training, EDD, uh, they are dedicated staff that work solely with veterans. I was an EDD vet rep for eight years. I know how hard they work and how they can really assist veterans getting prepared, ready, and get connected to employers. And they are co-located in the America's Job Centers of California. These AJCCs have the tools that you can use, computers, printers, scanners, fax machines, uh, job boards, uh, and it's all at no cost to you. So take advantage of them when you need them. Um, when it comes to California state benefits, like I said, that's what I'm all about. Uh, there's only eight links, but there are 56 uh, county veteran service offices in the state of California that assist veterans. They're trained by CalVet, 
They do 50% of the claims in the state of California. So if you need to see them about anything, and I suggest just go in and have a conversation, uh, they can assist with filing compensation claims, a pension, uh, whether it's college tuition fee waiver, educational benefits, fish and game, they're there to assist you not only with getting those benefits, but maybe making you aware of the benefits that you're available to. And then as far as healthcare, uh, like I said, I'm enrolled in VA healthcare. Uh, I think it's amazing. During COVID, we were locked down. Most of my appointments were through telehealth and VA Connect. Uh, so it's very easy to stay in touch with your healthcare providers. So make it sure that you use them when you need them. And then the vet center is there for you and your families. Next slide, please. So as I said, I'm a uh, service connected United States Army veteran. I've used a lot of the benefits and services out there. I can do that soft handoff to you. I can get you the information you need. So feel free to reach out to me, connect with me, and thank you for your service. All right, thank you, Annette. Um, a great service that's offered through CalVet. Uh, your links are definitely the ones that you want to start off with uh, if you can't get a hold of anybody at your county veteran service office. Um, but definitely reach out and use them. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Chris Engel. She is with the San, the San Francisco VA healthcare system, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about federal employment um, and resume writing and interview techniques. So when you're ready, go ahead, Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was great to hear from both of you today. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Engel. I'm also an eight-year Army veteran. I'm currently serving as a section chief for the Oakland Regional VBA office, so the benefits section of the VA. I'm also a military spouse and mother of four with two fur puppies and a cat as well, so constantly busy. <laughs> today, we're going to dive in and learn about how to fight your way into the federal government. We will cover what it takes to attain a government position outside of the military, how to navigate USA jobs, and of course, how to write a federal resume, which we know isn't easy. So normally with these kind of trainings, I love to do them in person, but since COVID we've been doing them virtually and I really wanna start off with an exercise. So I would ask you to just take a quick moment, go grab a piece of paper and a pen. Hopefully y'all have AirPods in and take us with you. So grab a quick, quick piece of paper and a pen and jump right into this exercise because today this is all about you and your transition from military into the private sector. And if that includes getting a federal position, this today is for you. Next slide, please. So I want you to think about being stranded on an island. Imagine, you know, however you got there, you're stuck on an island and there's only one ship only one rescue ship to get you back to the mainland, wherever that's at. What would be the reason you would give to that rescue ship to be on it, to name your seat? What would be that reason for you? Think about that for a moment. And I want you to grab that piece of paper and that pen and write that down. Next slide, please. Think for just a moment on the reason that you wrote down to be rescued. The first thing that came to your mind, whatever that was for you, no wrong answer. How does that relate to your purpose in life? What is your purpose and why does it matter? Take a moment to write down underneath your reason what your purpose is for this life. Now I want you after this training to go tape that piece of paper somewhere where you're gonna see it every single day. For me, I love my bathroom mirror. I also write down little positive notes and put it on my kid's bathroom mirror. So it's the first thing that you see every single day when you, when you wake up, what is your reason to be on that rescue ship and what is your purpose? Right now you might be thinking, wow, who's Chris? She's crazy. I might be a little crazy and that's okay. But right now, your purpose, your reason for living, your purpose for life is what fuels you not only in your personal life, but also in your career. Think about that for just a moment. Your purpose in life can have an impact on your career choice and how it fuels you through your best and your worst days. Next slide, please. <clears throat> 
Now back to that comment about what's up with Chris and what is, why is she having me do this crazy exercise? Why does your purpose even matter? I'm gonna give you some stats real quick. In 2022, the US deployed over 100,000 service members. The average service member and military family, including the military spouses and dependents, children, go through more life-changing events in a year than the average non-military person does in a lifetime. Let that sink in. That's a lot. Currently, Northern California has over 6,000 homeless veterans. There are 14,000 homeless veterans in the state of California currently being recorded. Of course, we don't know those who are not being recorded. The last year that the suicide rate was captured for veterans was in 2020 at over 6,000 with an average of 16 veteran suicides per day and the most common age for death being between 18 and 34 years old. Why? Why do we have homeless veterans? Why do we have service members choosing to take their own lives? And how can we make a difference? And how can we stand out? Remember, going back to that piece of paper, think about your purpose, think about your reason for being on that ship and how that can fuel you on your best days and on your worst days, remembering why it is that you matter. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Being in service is something that you chose to do. As far as I know, nobody here was forced to join the military. And you as an individual have a purpose in this life. Knowing your purpose, your intention for life, and most importantly, what you want from life will give you the energy you need on any day in any situation. Think about that for a moment. We've all been through complex situations and deployment, <clears throat> silly trainings, you know, you know, command directives that we don't always agree with, all those things, right? And the military is amazing at grooming us to think and act a certain way. It is what they need. That's what the military needs, right? A formation that is dress right dress. And along the way, service members may forget what it is that they want, why they joined in the first place, and how some have maybe even grown a little bit of resentment against their choice to join the military because they lost their way along their journey. I talk to service members on a daily basis, and often I hear things like, I left because I felt undervalued, invisible, lost, bored, stuck, and having to choose between my family and the military. Over time, we lose what our purpose is for life, why we joined in the first place, and where to go from here. Now, don't get me wrong, the military has a purpose, and I tell you something very near and dear to my heart. The reason I do this training, the reason I have this position with the VA is because serving veterans and their families is a big part of my purpose. And that is what fuels me on my good days and my bad days. <laughs> the opportunity for you right now <clears throat> is to remember and know your purpose for joining, why you chose to serve, and what it is you want out of life what your goals are so you can live life to the fullest regardless of the negative or positive situation around you, this can make your journey in and out of the military much more meaningful. Next slide, please. Yes, the VA, love this quote. And one day it's on my bucket list to go and see it in person. So we're going to hear about how some of the VA benefits are here for you and your family today, and how you can start your journey of preparing now, if you're still currently serving, or as you transition, or as you fully embrace that civilian life. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so first, <clears throat> I'd like to pause for a moment. Sorry, these allergies kind of kill me sometimes. <laughs> if you haven't heard about the PACT Act, we're gonna have some links dropped into the chat. And I really want you to take a moment and understand what the PACT Act does. I'm gonna briefly share that right now. The PACT Act is a new law that expands VA healthcare and benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. What does this mean? Well, if the VA benefits are expanding, 
so is our workforce. So right now we have a goal of hiring over 9,000 employees across the nation. Last year was the highest. We hired over 7,000 in fiscal year 2022. For fiscal year 2023, we are hoping to hire over 9,000. I have never seen a hiring influx as much as I have right now, and it is a great time to get into the government. You can literally join at any junior or senior level grade position. <clears throat> of course, we're gonna go through what it looks like to be able to serve and give back and get a position with the VA. But right now is such an amazing opportunity to jump in. And I will tell you this, even if it's not your dream job in the moment, remembering back to your purpose and how that can fuel your career, right now is a great time to get in, take any position. And then of course, once you're in, it's so much easier to jump around and transition into the positions that you actually wanna do for your career. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the VBA administers programs through 56 regional offices and four districts. The VBA is currently actively hiring for over 60 locations, some of which are hybrid, which means you only go into the office one day a week, some of which are fully remote positions. <clears throat> little foot stomp here, little foot stomp, write this down. Interested candidates can go to an announcement on USA Jobs, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and directly email the HR point of contact listed, say that you are a veteran and that you want to be considered for veteran preference, or say that you are a military spouse and would like to be considered for a military spouse preference. <clears throat> With that, I always recommend go one step ahead of that HR point of contact and add in your resume, D214, marriage certificate, and your spouse's military orders. Next slide, please. All right, USA Jobs. What is USA Jobs? USA Jobs is the main website used by all or most federal agencies to post positions and receive applicants. The time requirement for each announcement will vary. And we're gonna get into more of that, but I really want you to, to capture this. It does vary. So sometimes um, you might see a job announcement that says, job announcement will close once 50 applicants have been received. So that means it could literally be open for a few hours, which is what we've seen, because there are so many applicants out there right now, or it could be open for as long as three months. So a lot of time in between, a lot of those vary, and you'll want to read that on the job announcement. All right, next slide, please. The first step is to, and to apply for a federal position is to create a USA Jobs profile. I like to just emphasize there's no reason to start looking for a job on USA Jobs until you follow these steps and create a profile. And then, of course, build up that nice, good, long federal resume that all agencies love to have. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the first tab for your profile is the home section. In the home section, you will be able to view all applications that you have applied for and their status. A status can be in progress, received, referred, not selected, selected, or canceled. You will also be able to view your saved jobs. For example, you can pick a job that you might want to further consider on before you go apply and save it and come back and apply later. The last area is saved searches, one of my favorite functions of USA Jobs. You can create a search with a title and location and set all your filters, all your different areas of interest. And then when a position falls within that saved search, you can set it to email you daily, weekly, or monthly of those positions that are available. If you're actively looking, I highly recommend that you set up a saved search. When creating an account, it is really important that you fill out every single step within your profile. Think of like MySpace back in the day or Facebook. Don't miss any of those steps. Fill out every single section because that will feed into your federal resume and it also helps hiring managers um, to be able to see what areas of interest you have. Next slide, please. There are 11 tabs within the profile section of USA Jobs. First, we have your contact information. You'll complete this by adding your address. You can totally add a PO box, that's fine. Email, always prof professional. We don't wanna see hotbikinibody at gmail.com. That's super funny, but we don't wanna see that on your, on your USA Jobs profile. So something like christina.angle at gmail.com, super professional. Of course, your phone number, please make sure your voicemail is set up and it is professional. You know, we don't want to see anything like, hey guys, meet me down at the club. You know, funny again, maybe good for the military, but not for, not for when you're looking for a position in the government. 
Citizenship must annotate your citizenship. Hiring paths, claim every single hiring path that you possibly can. So veteran, military spouse, Schedule A for disabilities, <clears throat> recent grad, and any other pathways that may apply to you. It will expand your search and it will expand the position opportunity results for you as well. Federal experience, if you have a, held a federal position, non-military, add it. And of course, make sure the information that you put into the profile matches your SF-50, which you will upload in the document section. Military experience, you'll want to add in all of your military experience. And of course, you'll want to make sure that it matches your latest DD-214, which you will also upload into the document section. Work experience, add all work experience that is relevant to the position you are applying for. If you were previously a barista and you're applying for some type of food service within the government, of course, add that barista position that you held 15 years ago because it applies. Education, add all education, degrees, and certifications. <clears throat> Demographics, not required, but of course, like I said, the more you add, the more we know about you, and the more that sets you ahead of your peers to be considered for that position. Languages, add all languages that you speak, read, and write. Organizations, add all organizations that you affiliate yourself with. This shows that you are broad and have a lot to offer. And then references, you must add at least three professional references. It is an OPM requirement that we call three professional references before we hire any employee into the federal government. Next slide, please. So you may save up to five resumes on USA Jobs. You might say, hey, Chris, why would I have five resumes? Well, maybe you want to apply for logistics. Maybe you, maybe you want to apply to, um, for legal aid. Maybe you want to apply for HR. Create a resume for each career field that you are looking at. So as it pertains to that career choice that you have, you may have up to 10 additional documents stored on USA Jobs, so DD-214, uh, your degree, SF-50s, Schedule A, Veteran Preference, all those different documents, you can have up to 10. And I can't emphasize this enough, keep them up to date. I know that for Reserve and Guardsmen, we might get more than one DD-214. Always include your latest DD-214. And of course, make sure that information matches what you have in your profile. Next slide, please. The preferences tab allows you to set specific preferences that you would prefer, such as how much you're willing to travel, telework, permanent, temporary, and any kind of schedule that you might be requesting full or part-time. You know, I really emphasize just select everything that you're interested in because you never know how when you're into the interview process, how you can negotiate that with the agency. Like I said, VA and I'm sure other agencies are as well. We are hiring at a very fast rate right now. It's a great time to get in. And you wanna make sure that you set yourself apart um, from your peers and really show what it is that you have to offer. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so USA Jobs has amazing search functions. When you're looking for that perfect opportunity across the top, keywords can include the position title you are looking for and the location can be by city or state that you prefer to work in. If you notice the flag near the top of the page where you can select save this search, or if you've already saved the search, you can select edit save search. On the right side of the screen, you can also set your own filters for any of your searches that you've saved. And this way you can really narrow down what it is that you are looking for, what type of job, what type of location. And then of course, set up that saved search to notify you on a daily, weekly or monthly rate. Let me pause for a moment and share something a little personal about myself. I applied for 75 federal positions. I had 75 applications in USA Jobs during a nine month deployment to Kuwait and Iraq. I received three interviews, 75 applications. I received three interviews and I landed two job offers. I took my first federal uh, position in 2016. And in less than five years, I went from a GS7 to a GS13. I share that with you because I know what it takes <laughs> to build the profile, to create the resumes, to apply for positions and not get offers and, and feel frustrated and, and kind of just knocked down. Again, that's why I emphasize knowing your purpose and why it is that you wanna work in this career field of your choice and really just remember that it takes time 
takes work, it takes time, it takes effort, but it matters. It matters because of course you matter and you have a lot to offer. Next slide, please. All right, so now we're gonna jump into your resume, which is your ticket to your next opportunity. Your resume is your first introduction to your, to your employer, it is the first time that they are meeting you, right? So really you wanna make sure that it captures that hiring manager or it captures that hiring HR point of contact. Next slide, please. So first, it is important you understand the difference between a federal resume and a civilian resume. If I can click, have it clicked next on the slide. Perfect. So federal resume, capture that just for a moment. All right, next. And civilian resume, two very different resumes. All right, I write uh, veteran resumes for Facebook and LinkedIn and the San Francisco Giants and Google. All they want is a one pager very broad, very little information about their military service. Whereas the government, six to 10 pages, and they wanna know everything about you, what you did, how you left the position, how you made it better, and how you can quantify what it is that you did. Next slide, please. When applying for a federal position, the most effective way to build a resume is through USA Jobs. Couple reasons why. They have a step-by-step, Resume builder, too easy, right? Much better than starting with a Word document. And it pulls all of your information that you put into your profile, which is why I emphasize, take your time, fill out every single section of that profile because it'll dump it into the resume builder and make it so much easier for you. <clears throat> Next slide, please. All right, so your contact information, again, this is an essential part of your resume. And let me emphasize this for a moment. I see, uh, phone numbers that don't work. I see voicemails that are not professional, uh, email addresses that are not professional or email addresses that are missing uh, or misspelled. So I can't even, it'll get uh, rejected and come back to us when we try and make contact. So again, take your time, set up a professional email, set up a professional voicemail and make sure that your information is put into your profile and your resume correctly so we could contact you it really is disheartening to us when we see this awesome resume and we're like oh we want to contact this person and then we can't get a hold of them and there's nothing we can do about that so really take your time next slide please <coughs> work experience you want to go back as far as possible but 10 years is preferred you might say like oh well chris you know i got out after four years of service i'm only 22 i'm like no problem that's okay i understand i have a 15 year old so you know, I understand that high schools nowadays have these different clubs, different volunteer opportunities. So really think about what it is that you did that can relate to work experience and how can you write that and add that onto your resume to capture as much as possible. 10 years is not a requirement. I just really like applicants to think outside the box and what did they do, even if it was in high school or college or whatever, and how that can relate to work experience that counts toward the federal position that they are applying for. So what do I mean by that? If you've been working as an operation manager for the last 10 years, then there is probably no need to add that barista, barista position that you held 15 years ago, unless it pertains to a food service position that you're applying for with the government. Couple pointers, do not use bullets, use paragraph format. Also when writing your job description, it is important that you give every single detail, really quantify and let the reviewer know the facts about what you did for that position, how you left it better. So for example, I developed an Excel spreadsheet that tracked all personal actions for over hundred employees. The tracker was then implemented in five other departments. I was recognized by the CEO for the efficiency of that report. That's what you wanna do is just quantify and talk about how you left it better. And then a couple other pointers, hours worked. You, we cannot count the work experience unless you tell us the hours worked. Even if it's 10 hours a week, make sure you put 10 a week. Or if it was, if you want to go by month, that's fine too, or by day. Just make sure you add that so we can actually count that work experience toward qualifying you for the position. The more work experience you have, the more education you have, the higher grade, GS grade, you can be offered. And then if you can also include annual salary, the reason I always recommend that is because a lot of times we'll see rank, but if you have someone reviewing your resume that doesn't have any military experience, they won't know what that rank 
um, accounts to. So they won't know if you went from an E5 to an E6, they won't know the difference of that, right? So if you actually put on there the salary and they'll see the increase, they'll be like, oh, okay, this person was promoted. That must mean they had career growth within that position that they held. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I wanna pause here for a moment. Please understand, this comes from a place of, of great passion for serving veterans and their families. Being a veteran is not what sets you apart. I appreciate you for your service. I hope you appreciate yourself for your service. And I know your family appreciates you for your, your service. But please know you are what sets you apart. Not being a veteran, but you, you as an individual have a ton to offer and you are what sets you apart from anyone else applying for this position. So thinking about that for just a moment, think about how you can translate your military service and your military experience into wording that any hiring manager without or with military background will understand. Click next, please. So looking at this military verbiage, next. <clears throat> Retired Sergeant Major, United States Army veteran with over 20 years of experience, proficient in maintaining soldier records, improves passing APFT for over 20 soldiers, fostered an environment that promoted soldier growth and development, always maintained unit readiness for missions <clears throat> and mobilization, improved physical fitness standards for the unit by 90%. I worked in S1, I worked in S3, I worked in battalion, I worked at brigade, I understand exactly what this person did. But I will tell you right now, one specialist that reports to me who has no military background will not understand. And she might even think that, you know, like, hey, what is this person trying to do? What's APFT, right? Next, please. What about this? Professional operations manager with over 20 years of experience, proficient in maintaining employee records containing sensitive information, fostering an environment that promoted employee growth and development, maintain department readiness in order to complete projects and reach the objective of the company, held employees to company standards and policies by leading by example and improving employee morale and well-being, improved department physical fitness requirements for the employees by implementing a physical fitness workout plan that resulted in improving the test results by 90%. So you see how we just translate that very simply to quantify it and explain it in terms that anyone could understand. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so knowledge, knowledge is power. And one thing that the military is famous for, I don't care what branch you were in, I'm sure you had it, even for spouses, so much training is available on any military installation. You got the education center, you got mandatory training, you got all of it, right? So we wanna add all of it because it sets you apart. So degrees, certifications, Anything that you have that relates to the position and the career that you are going into on the civilian side, you want to add that to your federal resume. Whereas a civilian resume, you might just add your highest degree, right? But for a federal resume, you want to add it all. I always like to say that unless your GPA is above a 3.75, don't worry about it. Don't add it. We're not going to ask for it anyway. So, you know, don't, don't stress out about that. If you passed, you know, C's or doctors, all good to go with that. Certifications, you wanna add it, training, if you were a certified trainer, if you um, were a test facilitator, all of that great stuff that the military gives you, you wanna add that into your resume. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so affiliations. So, you know, again, going back to how the government wants to know all they can about you, and you wanna emphasize on what can set you apart. Do you volunteer in your kid's school? Do you sit on a nonprofit board? Are you part of the human resource command? Like all those different things, right? Um, add that to the affiliation section or to the organization section of your resume. It sets you apart from others. It shows that you care. It shows that you give back to the community and really can elevate your opportunity of being offered a position. Next slide, please. And again, same, similar volunteer work. <clears throat> and this I like to emphasize can really apply to those junior soldiers or junior airmen or junior uh, Marines. And, you know, really saying like, okay, Chris, I only did four years in the military. And then before that I was in high school or college. How did I get to that, you know, 10 years? I'm like, well, did you volunteer? Were you a babysitter? Were you a dog walker? Did you join clubs at the high school? All of it, right? 
You know, did you help at church? Did you work in a school? <clears throat> were you part of a sponsorship program when you were a young, a young service member? Any of that can be quantified and written on your resume. One thing though, just make sure that you add the dates and add that it was non-paid volunteer. <clears throat> and of course, add the amount of hours so it can count towards your work experience and impact a higher grade um, offer for you. This is also very applicable to military spouses. I can't tell you how many times I get told like, well, Chris, I, I traveled around with my spouse and I wasn't able to work. Totally fine, I get that. But I bet you did a lot of volunteer work. You know, yellow ribbon events, uh, deployed spouse or any of those, um, you know, squadron or unit clubs for military spouses. Maybe you um, kept the, the books of the secretary. Maybe you managed the financial records, whatever that was, right? Maybe you hosted events. You can quantify and add it to your resume as non-paid volunteer experience and just add the amount of hours per day or per week or per month so we can count it as experience toward that position that you are applying for. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So it used to be that references were not required, they were optional. But as of July of 2022, OPM said, hey, we're gonna require that every federal applicant has at least three professional references added to their resume. Yes, we do call them and yes, they must answer. I'm pause here for a moment. Don't forget to tell your references that we're gonna call them. I, I love it when I call a reference because it just kind of makes my day. And they say, who? Specialist Jones, I haven't talked to them in like 10 years. I, me, myself, I chuckle a little bit and then I say, we'll kind of refer back, do you remember this person? But I can't promise that every HR staff member or every hiring manager is gonna take the time to do that. They're gonna be like, oh, this person didn't even care enough to call their references and let them know that we're calling them. Even if it was 20 years ago, click, and then you'll be put in the discard pile. So take the time, add your references, make sure they're professional. Not like your your dad or your aunt or whatever that like call a professional reference let them know that we're going to be calling them and then ask them to be prepared to speak to your character and of course your work ethic next slide please <clears throat> all right so of course some of these are you know some interviewing questions that i just want to share with y'all because gosh in a more virtual environment it changes day to day on how interviews are being conducted sometimes they're on camera sometimes they're not you know, you can have a suit coat on and have some shorts on. Nobody will see your shorts, no big deal. And then now in a more hybrid environment, some interviews are actually happening across a board in person. So I really want you to be prepared for any kind of interview opportunity. So a few things to just keep in mind. We are asking a lot of behavioral type interview questions. And that's coming from a lot of agencies are implementing emotional intelligence type training for employees and leadership to really make sure that they can not only do the job, but also blend well with others on their team. So you may see some questions like this. Tell me about your experience, where you grew, where you learned, and how you left the situation better. I like to tell applicants, don't be afraid to tell about a mistake you made and then how you learned from it, and then how it, it turned around and you made it better. You don't always have to highlight on all positive. We like to see growth as hiring managers. And then tell me about a time you had a conflict with someone on your team, what did you do and what was the outcome? <clears throat> Again, if you had a conflict with someone, you yelled at them and the outcome was terrible. And then the next day you woke up and you were like, I should go take care of that and make that relationship better. That's a great example because it shows that you care, circle back with that person and you learn from your experience. Tell me about a time you didn't agree with a task or order. How did you respond? What was the outcome? Again, positive or negative and describe emotional intelligence and what that means to you. Highly recommend that you look into EI and really what that is all about, because I would bet that most interviews you will be offered will have some type of emotional intelligence questions on the interview panel. Another thing, send a thank you note. If you're um, having an interview virtual, be ready to be on camera. Even if the invite says, camera's not required, be ready, because they might be like, oh, we wanna see you. <laughs> so make sure you're dressed and good to go. Wear solid colors on camera. If there's like a lot of pattern, it can be super distracting to the interviewer. So wear solid colors. If it's in person, no smoking or intense perfumes, it can just be distracting. <clears throat> and then take a moment to relate and connect with your interviewer, ask questions, and then of course, take your time to respond to their questions, right? 
don't be in a rush to just share whatever. Take your time to respond. And then remember, you are also seeing if you're a good fit for this position, right? And, and you can also ask questions and decide right there, like, do I even want to take this opportunity if it was offered to me? Next slide, please. <clears throat> so just a brief recap on what we covered today. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. You are what matters. Your reason, your purpose for your life in or out of the military. Yes, the military needs you to be a certain way. Of course, that's what they need. And we support that 1000%. And what you want out of life, so you can live life the fullest, also matters. And really think about that as you make these choices and you start that transition and that journey into the private sector and into your personal and civilian life and how that will impact your career and the choices that you make. Thanks again so much for having me today. I really, really love this. This is a big passion of mine. Um, I appreciate y'all join in and I hope that you had some takeaways. I believe we have some great resources dropped in the chat and my contact information should also be in the chat. You are welcome to reach out to me. I'm also on LinkedIn. If you, if you contact me, I will contact you back and I will support you in any way possible. But again, thank you for having me today and I wish you all the best of luck. Hi, great. Oh, Chris, that was uh, great information. Thank you for being here today um, and uh, helping us out with this. Um, we are going to move into the questions and answers portion now. I'm going to go ahead uh, and put this slide up. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, for those, uh, Chris or Annette, if there's, uh, you know, a phone number or uh, another email address that you prefer, feel free to drop that in the chat as well. Um, our participants can see what's going in the chat and can grab that information. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in Jen. Uh, she is my colleague who's been uh, handling the resources. Uh, and um, see if any questions happen to come in uh, at all during the last hour. We actually didn't get any questions. I think Christina, uh, Chris did an awesome job. I really am impressed. I learned so much from you, Chris, um, and I know everybody else feels the same way. I put in the PDF of this presentation in the chat along with a bunch of other documents. Um, I remember at one point in your presentation, Chris, that you did uh, have a little tip about how to um, to go in the back door as far as uh, applying for uh, one of the jobs on USA Job. If you can explain that one more time and maybe even put it in the chat what you were talking about. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, great. you know, what you would do is like a person like myself, might be listed as a point of contact. Every job announcement on USA Jobs will have a point of contact listed at the bottom of the announcement. You can email them directly and say, I am requesting veteran preference. I like to recommend you put it in the subject line so it catches our attention and then add your resume, DD-214, uh, Schedule A disability letter, VA preference letter, or if you're a military spouse, add your spouse's orders, resume, and then their uh, marriage certificate. And what it does is it sets you ahead of all other applicants that may not have those preferences. And we are required to view all applicants that claim one of those preferences. And that's the little bit of the back doorway. Awesome. <laughs> you probably all heard me refer to. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then another thing that I put in there, uh, and maybe you can tell me about this also. Um, hold on, let me put, get it, put it back in there. It's the uh, Veteran Employment program office that have, oh, I opened it up instead of putting it back in the chat, but it has all the points of contacts for the different departments. What do you think about contacting those people to find, get in with the certain departments, seeing if they have any openings with those departments? You know, it never hurts. I'll tell you all a story real quick. Um, you know, I, I cold called a regional office director out of Baltimore four years ago, and I said, hey, I have this military spouse. Her husband has orders to DC. She's looking for a position. Will you consider her? She had an offer within three business days and she ex ex accepted an offer for a GS9 and was a GS13 within four years. So again, you just never know. I'm like, wh what's the worst they could say is no, right? You know, so just call, just call. Yes. All right. looks like we do have a couple questions here. Um, the first one says, I have submitted my resume, but have uh, but not a federal style one. Can I go back and change it now um, that I have learned there is a difference? Of course. If the job announcement already closed, 
email that point of contact on the announcement. If it's for a VA position, email me and I'll see what I can do on the back end. If it's for a non-VA of different agency, just email that point of contact. If it hasn't closed yet, you can go in and still edit your resume. Awesome. And then uh, another one says, how do I get veterans preference letter? Um, I'll put the Fez Hire Vets link on here. Is that what you are, what would recommend? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that should be accessible to you through your e-benefits profile. And also too, if you don't have a DD-214, this is a common question we get. Um, you know, the, the service member will say, oh, I don't have a DD-214. You're usually, usually your out processing center on the military installation or your command will give you a memo with a separation date and we'll take that, we'll accept that. Okay, and it looks like those are the only two questions so far. Um, wonder if there's anything else we can expand on. Is there, any, is there anything you would like to expand on? Hmm. No. Uh, if um, Michael, do you want to go over our upcoming webinars? Yeah, yeah, I can go ahead and move on to the last couple of slides. Uh, if questions come through within those next couple or next couple of minutes, we could definitely get to them. Um, and I'll also put our survey link in there if everybody wants to help us out and fill out that survey. That'd be great too. All right. Well, uh, so yeah, so. These are a uh, list of the upcoming webinars that we have, and we do have one live event as well. Um, I think I mentioned earlier uh, that I thought education was gonna be for the month of July. I was wrong, actually. We're actually going into emergency preparedness uh, month um, for July. So we are going to have a couple webinars that are focused on you know, um, preparing yourself for wildfires, depending on what part of the state you live in, or, you know, floods are, are going to be a big one this year. Um, on top of that, we're going to have a webinar that's focused on, um, you know, resources that you can use during uh, moments of um, um, emergencies, uh, specifically the home uh, protection uh, benefits that are offered through CalVet Home Loans. And then we'll have a couple other ones that are offered through uh, uh, the different schools around the state. Um, for those you don't have to be a student to attend those webinars, you can simply just go to our registration page and register and get the uh, the Zoom information that way. Um, so Jen, we, we did have three more questions come in. Uh, the first question is, are job fairs productive when attending? I usually get referred to USA Jobs. I would say yes, they're very productive. Um, we have been holding about two to five career fairs a month at the local military installations and in different opportunities we have around the Bay Area. And one thing we have, we do is, I can't speak for other offices, of course, but I can speak for my office. Um, I have an employee assigned as our outreach coordinator and we will do on the spot, very short interviews to really find out what kind of career that service member is looking to go into we'll make recommendations on the spot then we'll give them a little how-to guide how to update the resume and create a usa jobs profile we'll add them to our tracker we'll follow up with them within five to seven business days to see where they're at with their resume once they send that to us with their documents we immediately send them over to our hrc our human resource center to see how they qualify for that position so you're looking at within three weeks if you qualify for the position you could have an offer a job offer so I would say they're they're worth it for sure, um, and just stay stay committed, keep following up. We will check in with you, like I said, within five days. But I, I can't speak for other offices, but I would say yes, go to them if at all that, possible. That is definitely very beneficial because it is hard to navigate that. So to have kind of a direction and kind of have a path, it's 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 powerful. Yeah, so totally. Thank you for that. Um, awesome. Sure. So the next thing is without bullet points in the resume, doesn't the resume become too wordy? <laughs> I love it, yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Um, sometimes I have applicants say, yeah, it's too wordy or my sentences are run on. If you feel like you're getting into that place, just hit me up, reach out to me. I have some pointers on how you can make it very informative without sounding too wordy. But yes, we do want the paragraph format and, and we want you to really quantify that experience and really capture the data that applies to that position. And we don't prefer the bullets at all. The next question is what, oh, Christina's contact information. Uh, and, um, and does she help military spouses outside of California? 
So you yes, have I do. email there. So uh, I would say, I yeah. guess, if you via email would be the great, the best way to do that. Yeah, and so with Lance, I'll just quickly add to that. Um, look me up on LinkedIn, add me, and of course you can email me a, a, as well. And then if you want to contact me on LinkedIn, what I can also do, <clears throat> I have a pretty large network. I can share your um, your resume and your contact information with my network, which is nationwide. So I we have we have contacts in every single state for the VA, and I can refer you to any of those offices after we do all your qualifications. So that way, all they have to do is look at you for consideration for that job offer. Also, we have quite a few call centers that are virtual. I just referred a, a military spouse this morning to three different call centers uh, for a virtual position. So those travel with you wherever you go. Oh my gosh, that is so perfect for military spouses. It is really hard for them to get in careers with all the moving and such. So that's really, yeah. really great that they can start a career and that career can move with them no matter what the future holds and still be supportive to their spouse. So, wow. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. That is great to know. Um, awesome. So the next thing is, um, is it required to mention if you are have a disability when applying for the job? Oh, no, not required at all. It just is an extra, um, an extra path that you can consider using. So you could be like veteran, uh, schedule a disability, military spouse, a student, or recent grad. The more paths you choose, the more lists of applicants you're going to end up on for that position, but definitely not a requirement. Yeah, and I would say also it's not, uh, you don't have to say what that disability is at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it would count against, there's no, there's no uh, <clears throat> anything by saying you have a disability because it's, there's such a huge um, uh, umbrella for disabilities, honestly. So I don't think it would definitely wouldn't count against you to say you have a, a disability yeah. at all. Um, yeah. So um, are award justifications directly related to a project worth adding to applications as a separate document in addition to mentioned on your resume? Yeah, I would say like, for example, you know, if you got um, an ARCOM, right, or if it's a, a military award, if you got a, a military award um, for, you know, a certain project that you did or a specific deployment or a certain mission, and you reference that on your resume, and then you could also say, see attachments, right? And then in the write-up, which the number of that form is escaping me right now, um, but the write-up for that award can be as one of your 10 attachments, it can actually add value um, to what you're claiming on your resume. So I think that's that's awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. I oh, always... same thing. Also for uh, eval, sorry, uh, NCOERs and OERs, um, mm -hmm. evaluations. If you if you got one and it was um, you know top block or whatever, I would definitely recommend adding that because again, it it speaks to your character, it speaks to your performance, and it speaks to the value that you have to bring for that position. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, give them more, you know, you have more to that package. And it's like, it's almost like a letter of recommendation without being a letter of recommendation when you get that EPR yes. OPR that says, Jen did a great job, always motivated, always comes in with a great, uh, a great attitude or whatever it may be. Cause those are things that would be in a letter of recommendation. Right. And this is yeah, it, it's not, it wasn't even asked of, you know, of anybody. So it's really great. It was unsolicited. unsolicited. It was just given to you, given to you. So um, yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Awesome stuff. Um, I guess that's the last question here, unless anybody wants to add anything else. Yeah, and Jen, I would like to add something. I was an EDD vet rep for eight years. Um, they're very well, especially here in the Central Valley, that's what I can speak to, uh, with VA applications, whether it's a resume, uh, doing a direct uh, authorization to the VA. Um, so they're a real good channel that you can go locally within your community, and they can assist you with getting either a state or federal job. Um, definitely take advantage of that. It, like I said, it's no cost to you. And I, we have one gentleman here in Fresno who actually is like the number one vet rep in the state of California. Um, so seek them out, get their information, rely on them for everything that you need, as well as the County Veterans Service Office, and definitely take advantage. 
Yes, thank you so much, Annette. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I'm just gonna wrap up with please, you guys, um, fill out today's survey. Um, let us know how we're doing. Um, we use these surveys every single day. We want to make these uh, workshops as beneficial as pos possible for all of you. Um, and also, uh, on the 29th, we're going to have a follow-up workshop on um, how to search for jobs for uh, veterans and families. So it's another employment resources type of workshop. So if you want to get some more, you know, um, information about employment resources, please join us for that one. We'll also have a Lieber um, presenting for that one also. So that'll be really great. Um, with that, I'm going to hand the floor back over to Michael to close up the web, the workshop. All right. Yes. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, thank you for giving us your time to learn about resume writing and interview techniques. Hope that you guys learned a lot. Um, if you guys have any questions for any of us, feel free to email um, that CalTap inbox, um, or if you took screenshots or, or uh, pictures of our contact information, email whenever you need to. Um, thank you again for being here and we will see you guys at the next one. Have a good day.